Schaefer here. And this guy right here, James Morgan, he owns Combat Syndicate here in Ponca City, which is where we are right now. And so I wanted to bring him on camera, put you in the hot seat, man. You put these guys through the ringer up every day. So now, you know, my turn to, you know, make you sweat. <laughs> just kidding. No, you, um, I'm just so excited that you are um, participating in our Rage of the Cage events. And obviously, I think I told you I have like a really soft spot in my heart for the Ponca City area because we spend a lot of time here, even now. So I love to see um, this gym in action here in Pocket because I don't remember ever seeing it as I'm driving the Pocket City streets. I don't remember seeing that um, until like the last few years, which you've had this gym open for how long now? Um, we've been open for four years now. Four years. And so in, you, in this location for two years. Uh, we've been in this location for one. We were on Grand, uh, two separate locations on Grand for the first three years that we were open. Okay, and we're on Pine Street now. Is that yes. Correct? It's really nice how you have set up in here. So everybody likes it. Everybody that comes in, they've always got something really good to say. Luckily, it's set up. Everybody is. They say they get like that old school train bot when they come in here. Mm -hmm. It really does. It's like um, what is the real popular um, program now? I can't even think of what it is. They have like the hit training um, where you have the different stations and stuff. It just reminds me of like the basics of all of that. So I really love how you have it set up in here. So what made you want to open up a gym here in Ponca City? Well, I uh, I grew up here. I'm not originally from Oklahoma. I'm, I'm from Texas and moved here when I was young. Um, I started training here uh, out of a garage. And uh, I moved I moved back down to Texas and I was there training. And all my friends that I had made here throughout the years kept messaging me, James, you need to come back. You need to open something up. I, I think you guys would be, I think you'd do really good. And uh, I just knew that I could do something, you know. I, in reality, what I wanted to do was something to help, like the youth around town. Uh, there's, there wasn't a lot of stuff for people to do. I knew if I could get kids in here, keep them out of trouble, get them doing something, you know. But with all the other sports, you know, there's football, basketball, wrestling here. There wasn't jujitsu, and uh, I knew that there's no off season for jujitsu. So kids could stay busy all year. And uh, I just wanted to give kids and adults an opportunity to do something that could possibly change their lives in the future because that's what it did for me. And that's what I'm doing for everybody else. Tell me, because you're, you're leading me right now into the next question, how did you to change your life? Well, everybody around here that knows me uh, when I was younger, when I was a teenager and stuff, I used to get in a lot of trouble, uh, a lot of trouble and this and street fights all the time. And the I did an amateur MMA fight uh, with no training. I just, I heard there was a fight in town and I thought it was tough, so I signed up for it. And I actually did really well. And the guy's teammate uh, asked me to come train afterwards. He was really impressed with, with what I was able to do without having any kind of training. And uh, so, I, I liked what I did, so I was like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll come start training. And I remember my first night training, we were doing a, a guillotine defense, and I messed up. I was the only one that messed up, and I got embarrassed, and I was, it's never going to happen again. And I trained and studied every day and every night, like it was constantly on my mind. And it just it kept me from going and doing the things that I used to do when I was younger, and my main focus was on doing this and just trying to be as good as I could be at this. And your story is just, I hear it all the time. It gives me goosebumps every time because so many people that were going down a path that was not going to lead to anywhere good, you know, prison or worse. Yes. And so, I mean, your story just really, um, it, it makes me inspired to keep on doing what we're doing at Rage in the Cage. Yes. With like, since I've told you, I had that neck surgery, but it was partially because of jujitsu is why I had the neck surgery, the, you know, uh, but it's also still saved me being able to do jujitsu, you know, uh, my neck was strong because of doing jujitsu. Uh, I was able to get out of bed because I knew how to do the proper standing method. You know, most people struggle getting out of bed once they got surgery, like, my surgery was the most extensive neck surgery you can have. You, like I, I'm fused from C3 to C7, front back. And uh, the doctor said, I'll never do it again. And 
the week I got out of the hospital, I was in here getting yelled at by my son, Caleb, because I was on the mat, still trying to do stuff. And he grounded me, you know, I'm his dad, but he grounded me uh, every week for the first three months while I was in the neck brace. And after that, I was on here training, hitting bags, sparring, uh, wasn't supposed to spar. According to the doctor, I was never going to do it again. And I've been slowly getting back into it myself, trying to help push these guys to get ready for their fights or competitions, whatever they have coming up. I try to keep most of them busy, like the guys that really want to compete. I try to keep them busy. Caleb has been gone basically nonstop since August. You know, uh, he's competed on other cards. He's done a lot of jujitsu tournaments. Uh, and he was on that last uh, Will of the Cage card, and then I got him this. And then I said, after this one, you can take a break for the rest of the year and <laughs> let your body rest. I'm stubborn, you know, like I can't help myself. It's, it's, I'm either all in or I'm all out, you know? And uh, so he was there, like, he was a major part of my recovery. Uh, he would come over every day, make sure that I was able to get up and uh, he would take on pills that I was supposed to take and stuff like that. And keep me company because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't drive, look up, down, left or right. And, you know, he was there for me through one of the toughest times of my life, you know? And so, I mean, just as a, as a dad, that means a lot to me, you know? Uh, and for his fight career, I want to be able to get him wherever he wants to go with it. I'll do everything in my power to make sure he succeeds. Wonderful. And how many total do you have that actually compete out of the gym? We have several. Um, we've had, uh, I mean, we're small town, small gym, uh, but at some of the tournaments we've had probably a good 12 to 15 people competing, uh, at tournaments. Uh, we, on other fight cards, we've had four people fighting at once. Uh, this last, uh, roll card, we had three people on it, you know, so, uh, it just depends on who wants to be a competitor who doesn't but we don't force our guys to compete uh we don't force them to be fighters if they're hobbyists they're hobbyists you know if they're just sitting here trying to get in shape or looking for to make you know friendship connections and stuff like that um then that's what we offer you know but we're we're here for the people and we're not here to breed fighters you know it's it's we're here for the community and if that's what they want to do once they get in here and they fall in love with everything, like chased it, and that's what they want to do, then we'll help them get there. But it's in the right timing, and it's not, it's, it's they're, they're kind of not led to a certain direction, you just tell them, hey, yeah, whenever they, you're ready. Exactly, ready. and it's, it's more or less if they come to me and they say, hey, I, I think I want to go to the Jiu-Jitsu uh, tournament. Absolutely, we'll get you ready for it. Or if they come up and say, hey, I, I want to fight, no problem. Uh, with Chase, I approached him. I said, hey, man, would you be opposed to doing a K-box and bike? And he was like, yeah, I'd like to do that. Okay, I'll see what I can do. And here we are. Nice. What gym did you say that you trained up before you started here, though? So I've, I've trained at several. Like, it, initially, uh, when I first started, I was just training out in the garage with other people, uh, mostly self-taught in the beginning. And then I, I trained at Bracey Wild down in Houston on your Dracula you know. Um And then I went to uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu school with my instructor there. His name was Terry Hingham. Uh, is, the name of the school is Pasadena Martial Arts. And uh, I trained there for several years. I got my black belt under him. And uh, I went and cross trained uh, with Ed Ramos. Uh, He's, uh, at the time, in 2016, 2017, he was one of the best in the world at 165 pounds in jiu-jitsu. Um, I cross-trained with him probably two, three times a week. Uh, I was, I was training six, seven days a week. I, I was training full-time on top of working full-time, so I never had, I had three or four hours to sleep a night besides working and training. So. Time on your body. Yeah. <laughs> you probably learned that you can't keep that up forever. Uh, it, you know, I still want to, but the, that old neck surgery thing kind of slowed things down for me. Anything I didn't ask you about your gym or the community that you might block people out there to you know? Um, well, with our gym here, uh, we offer a week free trial 
uh, kids and adults. They can come in, they can train every single class uh, to make sure they like it before they sign. We do self-defense seminars for the high schools. Um, we've done one for a Pop City cheer team here, the girls basketball. Uh, we've done it for the girls in Newkirk, and I believe we've done it for Blackwell. Um, we offer, uh, when we don't charge for the seminars. Uh, it's, it's just something that if we can go out and get two or three girls or guys, we do it for mass too. But, Self-defense for women is important, in my opinion, uh, especially with the way things are going in the world nowadays. Uh, most of the time people are like, well, I would do this and I would do that until it happens. Okay. Now the only way to make sure that you can do something like that is if you train. And if we can just grab the attention of two or three girls and get them in here to see what they can learn. And is it something that you hope like, you hope you never have to use, but it's always good to have it. Well, I appreciate everything you're doing for the community here, and I'm so glad we got to make the drive down here. We really try to get to see these gyms and see where these fighters are coming from, and it helps me because I interview a lot of fighters. It helps me be able to put a name with a face and and see the guys and really get to follow their careers. So, so excited to see where both of these guys go and anybody else, even all the rage cards. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you.